Hey, Risto here with George Mason University. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Cassandra Iannucci today. Uh, she's a lecturer in health and physical education at Deakin University and comes to our podcast from Limerick University where she was before in Ireland. Uh, she just recently completed her PhD. So here we go with a new episode of Playing with Research in Health and Physical Education. Now the article we're highlighting today is titled Development and Initial Validation of the Teaching Multiple School Subject uh, Role Conflict Scale. It was published in 2018 in European Physical Education Review. And for those of you who are listening and want to know more about the uh, instrument development piece of this, we have a side-by-side podcast that we recorded where we go way more into the stats and the methods of developing that instrument Um, So you can listen to that before or after this podcast. Uh, So, um, Cassandra, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk to you about this paper. Um, But first, I would like to acknowledge my co-authors, Professor Anne McPhail and Dr. Kevin Richards, both of whom were my PhD supervisors and have been incredible mentors for me as I begin my academic career and not a bad pair of PhD mentors. So uh, good on you. Um, So I do have one question to start off. Um, Ireland to Australia. Um, I don't think you can get farther away from one place. Were you itching to leave or why did you go so far? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, my mom asked the same question. I'm originally from Canada and I just keep moving further and further away. Um, But that hasn't been the attention. I honestly just appreciate the value of teaching and learning in different contexts. So I'm always up for an adventure. And so you discuss a teacher having multiple roles like teaching physical education and teaching another subject. Um, You've published a bit on this already before uh, this piece of your dissertation. And so why is this a problem and where does this uh, occur? Well, teaching is often considered a complex profession. Teachers have a lot of responsibilities on a day-to-day basis, like planning, instructing, assessing, et cetera. And some of my earlier dissertation work identified that the already complex role of a teacher might be further complicated when they're required to teach physical education and another school subject concurrently. We don't know enough yet about teachers' experience in this type of dual role position to suggest it's inherently problematic, There's actually evidence to suggest that teaching a combination of two subjects of varying statuses within a school community may even dilute the negative effects of challenges faced by teachers of marginalized subjects. But it does become problematic when the subject-specific roles and responsibilities are different or contrasting to the extent that it becomes difficult for one person to fill both sets of expectations. So teachers may be responsible for teaching multiple school subjects in, but not necessarily limited to, countries where teachers are dual subject qualified upon graduation from their teacher education programs, like about half of European countries, Canada, South Africa, and Australia. And we can add the state of California in there uh, for some of those as well. But uh, so you use role conflict theory here. Uh, what, What is that? Well, rule theory in general seeks to explain how individuals behave and how they expect others to behave based on the position they hold in society. When everyone agrees on the expected behaviors, there's rule consensus, but that's not often the case. So when there are differing expectations, rule stressors are likely to occur. And role conflict is one of the three most prominent role stressors in the educational literature, along with uh, role overload and role ambiguity. But there are two types of role conflict, intra-role and inter-role conflict. When someone is in a single status position um, and is responsible for varied roles and responsibilities with contradictory or ambiguous expectations, they may experience intra-role conflict. And for example, like I mentioned um, before, a classroom teacher that's responsible for instruction, classroom management, assessment, et cetera. Whereas inter-role conflict occurs when an individual plays multiple roles and the expected behaviors and responsibilities of the roles are different or contrasting to the extent that it becomes difficult to meet the expectations of both roles. 
And the type of integral conflict that you might be more familiar with is the teacher-coach conflict, which is the extent to which teachers are able to meet performance expectations of simultaneously teaching and coaching extracurricular sports. Now, we know a bit already about the conflict of teachers, like you said, about coaching sports, which I feel like many PE teachers do all, all across the world. Uh, but what do we know about teachers teaching other subjects? Well, prior to my dissertation work, there really wasn't any literature exploring the interval conflict occurring when teachers are responsible for concurrently teaching physical education and another school subject. So there is still a lot to learn. But what we have started to see is that over the course of teachers' careers, there is a really interesting push-pull dynamic between their role as a teacher of physical education and their role as a teacher of another school subject, as well as a number of role conflict management strategies. So for example, we see evidence of role prioritization, where teachers are prioritizing one role for varied reasons, such as feelings of greater rewards and accountability associated with teaching that particular subject. But that prioritization of one role is often to the detriment of the other as it can become stagnant or even neglected completely. Um, this is not, not dissimilar to teacher-coach role conflict management strategies where accountability and reward structures often push dual role teacher coaches towards the coaching role. So we also see evidence of burnout and early career attrition as a result of the nuanced challenges associated with teaching physical education and another school subject concurrently. You state that... Um... The role conflict of teaching multiple subjects is uh, influenced by three factors. So if you look at your paper, you have the feelings of greater value or status placed on one role over the other as a result of uh, subject status and marginalization. So I'm just like in my brain, I'm imagining in the U.S. if you're a football coach and super popular versus teaching a marginalized subject like physical education. Uh, and the second one is contextual challenges such as timetabling or and isolation. And then the third is energy expenditure such as uh, feelings of being spread too thin, doing a ton of different things. Um, and as a result of that, an overload of conflicting demands on their physical and emotional energy. Can you uh, break those down? Uh, yeah. So. As we've alluded to already, this paper we're talking about today is a measurement instrument development and validation paper. And when developing and validating a measurement tool, the survey needs to not only be statistically sound in terms of validity and reliability, but also theoretically justified. The three factors you mentioned conceptually support the teaching multiple school subjects role conflict scale um, developed and validated in this paper. So marginaliz marginalization and subject status literature supports the idea that there is or can be a subject hierarchy within a school context, meaning not all subjects are perceived to hold the same level of prestige and importance by all members of the school community. So teachers who are enacting dual role positions within the school context, where they are responsible for teaching two or more subjects that are ranked at different levels on the hierarchy, may experience differing levels of status and rewards associated with their respective roles. And this may contribute to experiences of role conflict. The second factor is related to contextual challenges. Uh, isolation literature informs the understanding that where and when teachers are teaching throughout the school day impacts their experiences of teaching. So for teachers who are required to negotiate a teaching timetable that does not account for the physical location of the different school subjects taught, there may be increased challenges. For example, a teacher who is scheduled to teach a physical education class in a gymnasium on one side of the school campus, followed immediately by a class that requires preparation, so like setting up materials for a science experiment in the main school building, uh, this teacher may feel as though there's insufficient time to fulfill expectations of both roles well. And so logistics related to teacher's timetable and scheduling can contribute to teacher's experiences of role conflict. And the third factor is this notion of being spread too thin. So we draw on the teacher-coach role conflict literature, which 
suggests that if teachers do not feel as though they have the resources, and whether that's physical, emotional, or intellectual energy, to fill the expectations associated with each role simultaneously, these teachers are more likely to experience role-related conflict. So for example, teachers may feel as though they are exhausted after teaching the physical education class from the amount of physical energy expended demonstrating and moving through the learning space, as well as the emotional energy required for engaging and encouraging student participation. And as a result, they are arriving to their subsequent mathematics class, for example, with less energy than when they, than what they would otherwise need to feel as though they are fulfilling their responsibilities well. So the rationale is that teachers who feel as though they are being spread too thin as a result of the contrasting expectations and different role-related responsibilities of teaching different school subjects may experience role-related conflict. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking about in, so when I used to teach uh, at Cal State Fullerton in California, you're allowed to have elementary school teachers teach uh, physical education. They didn't have to be licensed specialists in PE. So I'm just thinking that this is very similar in that role of running, you know, and that's pro one of the reasons why traditionally uh, elementary PE teachers uh, or when they're teaching generalist uh, subjects and then teaching PE that they might not do it as well because it's like, oh, I got to go in and set up this high quality lesson, but I have to go teach math and then science before that. So, um, yeah, I, I think this hits home with a lot of people. Um, so overall, what was the purpose of this study? Well, the purpose of this study was to develop and provide initial validation of the teaching multiple school subjects role conflict scale, which is an instrument to measure interroll conflict between the roles of teaching physical education and another school subject. Now, making an instrument is no small task. Uh, we do go very in-depth on this uh, with the side-by-side -side podcast on instrument development. Uh, so we don't overwhelm people on this one. But my question to you is, which I ask in the other one too, if I want to measure role conflict quantitatively, like you do here, why don't I just open up my computer, start typing out questions on Word, and uh, then load them on something like Qualtrics or SurveyMonkey, send it out to teachers, get results, and then I can publish a paper. Well, as you mentioned there, developing and validating a measurement instrument is, is a really complex multi-step process, which as, as you also mentioned, we do break down on the companion podcast. Um, but in short, to answer your question, without validating a measurement tool, you don't know with any certainty that the tool actually measures what you want it to measure or what you intend it to measure. So this completely challenges the validity and reliability of your research. Okay, so the results section of this is loaded with heavy stats. You bring up confirmatory factor analysis, exploratory factor analyses, uh, parsimonious factor structures, convergent and divergent validity. I hope I sounded smart there. Uh, it's heavy. It's it's a lot of quant stuff. Uh, so I will suggest that people who understand this piece go to the article to see this part or listen to the companion podcast. Um, and I apologize to Steve Silverman for failing to cover this section in depth, who is uh, my doctoral advisor. But uh, what does this all mean? Uh, you did this study. You tested this instrument. And the great words of my qualitative methods professor, Dr. Michelle Knight, so what? Ah, yes, my favorite question, so what? Um, well, briefly, from a measurement perspective, this study represents a first step in quantitatively examining teachers' experience of this type of role conflict. The EFA and CFA results support the teaching multiple school subjects role conflict scale as a valid and reliable tool for measuring this type of role conflict. So this allows future work in the area to quantify teachers' experience of role conflict experienced when teaching multiple school subjects, particularly physical education and another school subject concurrently. But in terms of implications for practice, this research contributes to an understanding of teachers' professional lives. 
So working with the assumption that dual teaching roles may compromise the teacher's ability to fulfill the expectations and responsibilities associated with both roles concurrently, which may result in undesirable consequences, such as prioritizing one role over the other, which may lead to neglect in the other, or teacher burnout and early career attrition. Um, so the more we understand, the better we can prepare pre-service teachers in their teacher education programs and in-service teachers throughout or through professional development to manage potential role-related conflicts throughout their professional lives. What are some uh, limitations and recommendations from, uh, from your work that you found? Well, like any validation work, this is an ongoing process. So evidence from independent studies in a variety of contexts is needed to continue to confirm the validity of the scale. Um, while our EFA and C CFA sample sizes are considered um, acceptable based on the recommendations in the literature, our larger sample size would be preferable, particularly for the EFA. Um, so also the data reported in this paper is cross-sectional in nature, so it doesn't account for consistency over time. And given the dynamic nature of teaching, there may be different points of the school year where different roles require varying levels of investment, different levels of rewards, et cetera. So teachers' experiences of this role conflict may fluctuate over the school year. So future longitudinal work and further qualitative work could really account for this. So thank you so much for taking us through this. Um, again, I want to thank you for your time. We really appreciate the work that you're doing. And uh, it's a good example of a uh, dissertation that is sequential. in if you look at your publication record off of this topic and the, and the papers that have come out, it's very sequential and planned out in how you do this, which is what you should be doing in research. Uh, so can you let people know where they can find more information on your work, other articles you published, or um, your social media handles? Uh, yep, yeah. um, you can find me on ResearchGate and Twitter. And uh, my Twitter handle is at Casa Maria B. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, we will link to all of the article information and the citations and uh, the Twitter and the ResearchGate in the notes section. And uh, that's all we have for you on this one. Thanks for listening.